Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Reviews Remixed. I'll be your host of this segment, Junior Ruiz, and I've got some books I want to talk about right now. But besides that, I've got some books that I want to catch up on that I'm going to go ahead and review in the uh, upcoming weeks. Previously, my reviews were only for Facebook, but now they're on ComicsRemix.com, so everybody can watch them. But Facebook will still have some uh, exclusive reviews, specifically done by my Spinner Rack co-host, Brian Adams. So check the, make sure you check those out from time to time. But... Let's move on to the reviews. That's what we're waiting for. That's what we're here. First book I got up is from Boom Studios. It's called Evil Empire, issue one. You got a good look at that cover. And the cover was also done by Jay Shaw. I just want to throw that out there. So Max Bemis and Ransom Getty go ahead and give us a pretty good tale about politics. I know nobody likes politics. You don't po talk politics. You don't talk religion. But politics nonetheless um i'll be honest man this book is pretty cool it starts off in a weird kind of setting future where there is a gentleman in his wheelchair um going down the street where he's approached by a bunch of young thugs now the young thugs see him as a homeless man and they start beating him or a good samaritan comes in he decides hey you know what that's not cool i'm gonna help out pulls the blade out the thugs run away but because of his good deeds the patrolman slash lawman of uh this town or whatever they decide, they say, hey, you know, what are you doing? That's against the law. And they put guns to the heads. But as you turn the page, we're introduced to one of the players in the book called Reese. Now, Reese is a musician. She's, go, she's singing about the world that she lives in and how screwed up it is. And it's kind of like that political music, you know, where she's trying to get the message out. And not, you know, it's not rap, it's not hip hop, any of that stuff. It's not love music. It's just she believes in a, in a specific system and she's using her music to influence her beliefs, which, you know, a lot of music, true musicians do. So in this book, after the concert, she's backstage and she's, we're introduced to Sam Dugans. Sam Dugans is also one of the political people in the book that you're going to read about. There are two, obviously, competition. Sam tells her he's a fan, he's a legit fan. He's not just trying to go ahead and butter her up in hopes that she'll support his political views. Um, throughout the book, the conversations that Reese and Sam have are pretty cool, and it's like Reese becomes a little bit more trusting of Sam to the point where they decide to go on a date. Uh, now, during uh, their conversations, the way it reads to me, at least, it's like it seems like Sam is being controlled, like he kind of admits without admitting that he's a puppet just being controlled and he's like kind of put in that place and he doesn't agree with some of the views as well but whatever halfway through the book we're introduced to a yellow uh, a young lady who finds a pull of blood on the floor follows it and it turns out her mother has been stabbed in the back with a knife and passes away in her arms turns out the mother who was stabbed is the wife of sam's um political competition at the end of the first issue, we are at her funeral where the killer is revealed. I'm not going to go ahead and say who the killer was. For that, you guys are going to have to pick up Evil Empire, number one, Boom Studios, by Max, Re Max Bemis and Ransom Getty. Excuse me, I'm stuttering here. But uh, check it out. out of, I give it two and a half out of four stars. Definitely a good read. I will definitely be back for issue two. Another book I want to uh, review, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm kind of gonna, I'm probably get scoffed at for it, but it deserves a review nonetheless. Super Genius and Titan Comics have decided to go ahead and put out WWE Superstars. Now there are uh, there are three issues in now, or excuse me, two issues in. But um, you know, being a wrestling fan, I've got to go. I, I I said, you know what, it, the art isn't all there. It's, first of all, it's co-written by wrestling legend Mick Foley. Uh, along with Shane Riches, and the art is by Ale uh, Aletha Martinez. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. But being a wrestling fan, this was something I was like, you know what? I gotta try it. I, I want to check it out. If it sucks, you know, whatever. At least I, I I know it sucks because I tried it, not because it's a wrestling comic and those are kind of taboo. Anyways, um, the gist of the book is basically you take the superstars and instead of having them in a wrestling ring, you kind of put them in real life scenarios. They, uh, they inhabit Titan City, and Titan City is obviously run by the McMahon family and the authority, Stephanie and uh, Triple H. The, the issue starts off with John Cena in jail being released by Triple H. John Cena was in jail because he's an ex-cop, and he was framed for supposedly stealing a million dollars or something like that in a briefcase. Nobody knows where it is except John, so Triple H says, I'll let you out, you find my money, or you find the money. 
You also got Randy Orton and Alberto Del Rio who are uh, competing to be the uh, the city's district attorney, which is kind of weird. CM Punk is the vigilante that's more like, you know, this we need to come with an, uh, uh, an uprising of it, and he's going around trying to find people who will be on his side. He's found the urban vigilante slash superhero Rey Mysterio to help him out. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Big Show is also giving him a hand. CM Punk has gone to Undertaker's tattoo parlor and hopes that Undertaker and his brother Kane will help them out. While Undertaker tells him no, supposedly Kane has said yes. Moving on, Daniel Bryan is an urban legend. Does he exist? Does he not exist? Ask Randy Orton because he seems to be the center of uh, Daniel Bryan's attacks. Also, the police force in the city. Obviously, the Shield is on the uh, police force. They're kind of crooked cops. The Wyatts are a bunch of weirdos. But going back to the police force, Christian is on the t uh, police force as well as Dolph Ziggler. Everybody in there pretty much plays a role. AJ uh, holds. She's been kidnapped by the Bella Twins because supposedly she knows where the money is. If she doesn't know. She knows, John, she's got ties to Cena, she's got ties to Punk, you know. So, uh, AJ actually plays this, uh, a pivotal role in this book. It's not bad for the wrestling fans. I know I'm kind of describing it and it's probably sounding like I'm butchering the damn thing. But if you're a wrestling fan, I definitely would advise that you give it a try. I've tried to get John to read it and he refuses. Um, but it's actually pretty good. As a wrestling fan myself, I actually purchased the first issue after I read it. I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. It seems to be pretty cool. It's just people relate wrestling and comic books. They don't go together. You know, you, how can you do this? You know, this is wrestling. It's it's cheesy what they're doing. you got to remember it's wrestling first and, for, first and foremost. Wrestling's always going to be cheesy. But regardless, I give, uh, I, I would say that Mick Foley and, um, and Shane Riches are actually giving it a good shot. And WWE Superstars, I purchased the first issue, all four covers, mind you. And I purchased the second issue. When issue three comes out, I'll definitely be grabbing that. But um, like I said, if you're a wrestling fan, definitely check it out. Do yourself that favor. J don't judge a book by its cover. At least give the first issue a try. I always tell that to anybody who asks. You know, you got to read the first issue. Sometimes you got to give it to the first story arc. Now, I do have a lot of people who read the first issue and I like, that's it. It's crap. I'm done. You know, the story has to start somewhere. You have to give it time to build. They can't give you everything with one shot. So take out, uh, check out the first arc usually. But WWE Superstars, I'm going to go ahead and give it two stars out of four. Definitely an interesting read, especially for the wrestling fans. Check it out. Moving on. there's I got a stack of books here that uh, I want to go ahead and get to sometime this month. And uh, every week I'm going to give you new reviews. But these will definitely be reviews that are coming up. So, uh make sure you check it out i'm definitely going to be reviewing magneto number one he's got his new ongoing series here and it's written by chris bunn cullen bunn excuse me why the hell did i call him chris Eesh, rookie mistake but it's written by cullen bunn and it's drawn by gabriel hernandez walta magneto number one marvel comics review coming soon moving on dynamite has released turok dinosaur hunter number one uh, I know there's a lot of Turok fans out there, especially the old school games. I'll be reviewing this as well. I wasn't big into Turok, but you know what? Uh, Greg Pak's writing it. So, Turok Dinosaur Hunter number one review coming soon. Um, I've never been a fan of this video game in particular, but I am a fan of Gail Simone's writing. Tomb Raider number one by Dark Horse review coming soon. Can't wait for. I actually can't wait wait to read this. Pretty thick too. So for three fifty, better be a good damn good story. Uh, Image Comics by Jonathan Ross, Ian Churchill, Revenge, number one. Um, I was glancing through this book when it came out the, uh, last week. Crazy stuff. Uh, I saw face carvings. There was sex. Um, there was a lot of blood. There was some sex. And there was, uh, there was sex, which is why it's actually in the baggie. So I'm going to go ahead and be checking this book out for the revenge aspect and, you know, the face carving and blood and all that good stuff. Moon Knight, number one, written by Warren Ellis. Started reading this. I didn't get a chance to finish it, so I, it wouldn't be a fair review right now. Um, I will say it is a different take on Moon Knight in terms of um, what they he's been and what they've currently got him doing. So this one I am very excited to read, and it's thick as hell for three ninety nine. dollars uh, This book came out a few weeks back, Fantastic Four, number one. My opinion, Marvel needs to stop relaunching stuff. 
but that's not for this uh, segment. This is reviews only. The fact that they changed their outfits also to black and red from the uh, original blue is uh, intriguing. So I will be going ahead and reading this. James Robinson has always been a good art, uh, excuse me, good writer, especially his DC stuff in Earth Two and his Starman stuff was amazing. So Fantastic Four number one should be pretty interesting. From Vertigo, we've got by Toby Litt and Mark Buckingham. Dead Boy Detectives, number one. Ooh, Dead Boy. Um, I have no idea what it's about, but it's from the pages of Sandman, which we all know is a great book. And, you know, it's Vertigo. Vertigo is pretty good with their stuff, man. They don't pull any punches. And I don't remember the last time I read a Vertigo book that I was like, wow, this is crap. Most of the stuff Vertigo puts out is pretty damn good. And, yes, that also includes iZombie. Moving on, Batman, Joker's Daughter, One Shot. This book came out a couple of, uh, about a month or so back now. Joker's Daughter was a character that was debuted back in October for the Villains Month. It was very hot, you know, there was a lot of anticipation, and then when that book came out, wow, did it suck. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and point the finger. Uh, Anne Nocetti, to, in my opinion, is not a great writer. Her Green Arrow stuff was horrible, and when she took over Catwoman, it went downhill as well. Now that she's handling Joker's daughter, it doesn't interest me at all. But the fact that this is not written by her, and it's actually written by Marguerite Bennett, um, I'm going to go ahead and check this one shot out and see if it's a character I can actually seem that I want to read more of, or if it's just because Anne Nocetti is butchering it to the point where I don't care about the character. I'll let you guys know. Uh, Top Cow has put out a book that the covers, for some reason, are the covers are catching my uh, my attention, and um, <coughs> it's written and drawn by Laramie Taylor from Top Cow Image. It's called A Voice in the Dark. Um, from what I understand, it's about some sort of radio DJ. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Don't don't quote me on that. It's four issues in right now. It's a black and white comic, but the art is simple enough. And it seems like there's a lot of exposition in here. So I'm really, really going to dig this stuff. I like these kind of books where it's coming out of left field. Like you don't really see a comic book very often about a DJ host or a radio host. So A Voice in the Dark, I'll be checking that out. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's tons more. But those are uh, those are what's currently on shelves right now that I really, really, really want to hurry up and read. Um, there's tons more stuff. Like I definitely, there's books that I have been catching or, excuse me, that I am current with. But um, I talk about those quite often on Spinner Rack, and those books would be Superior Spider-Man as well as uh, IDW's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, so, yeah, these books here, I will be reading them. I will be reviewing them. I will be sharing my reviews and thoughts with you guys. If at all you disagree with any of my reviews, hey, cool, let me know. You know, let's talk about it. Why did you like it? Why didn't you like it? But uh, in the meantime, check out Super WWE Superstars number one, two out of four stars. And Evil Empire number one, two and a half out of four stars. For another Reviews Remixed, I'm Junior Ruiz, and that was the review. Peace.